meeting on the crossroads where the two forbidden subjects of religion and politics mix. This is the Sophie Scholl Roundtable, and with me today is Tim Hagberg. And we're going to talk about the concept of social justice warrior. Is that biblical? Let's talk about it, Tim. Oh, I think it absolutely is biblical. Tell me how it's biblical. Because... I mean, what's out there is the modern uh, ad, or the modern translation of that, I would say no, but God is a social justice warrior. He is the only one qualified. I think that's the word I'm looking for, qualified mm -hmm. to claim the role of social justice warrior. Now, he should have advocates. He should have followers. He should have imitators, right? Imitators of Christ. Uh, but... The whole And a lot of people say, oh, Jesus didn't deal with these social things, but the God of the Bible is absolutely. And, be, and I say that because God is the architect of society. Mm -hmm. He is the designer of the family. He's the creator of man, woman. He's the designer of the family, which is the building block of society, which is the proprietor of government. Mm -hmm. So he is the author of society. He is the author of justice. And he is a warrior. He will have his way. He will punish evil. He will reward righteousness. Yeah, and I, it's interesting you bring that up because the Bible in Exodus 15 verse 4 in the NIV says, the Lord is a warrior. Yes, indeed. And then now that I've seen society, I've seen a, a trend to, to drop the warrior and replace it with advocate. Maybe they're trying to smooth things over in uh, some of these political circles, uh, trying to distance themselves from the violence. But let me say what's going on out there. I'm going to tell you is a social agenda warrior. Mm -hmm. People who want to arrange or rearrange society for personal benefit. Thus the agenda. Warrior. And they are warriors. They will attack. They will destroy. Make mm -hmm. no mistake about it. Uh, the reason I say that man cannot do these things outside of God's law is that justice requires objectivity. Mm -hmm. Man is in the game. Uh, you, let's think, consider this. The flags plays over. The flags come out next in line. The finger pointing left and right. Players are not referees. The referee has to be objective. He has to be outside of the game. Man is in the game. And the short answer is baggage and objectivity. Why uh, you have to revert to God's law to find out uh, justice. And we have many justice verses we want to look at. Real quick, Blackstone called it the laws of nature. Well, Jefferson, the laws of nature, nature is God, quoting Blackstone. says, what are the laws of nature is God? God's law written on man's heart. Good thing, Romans 2, glad he did it. However, man's heart is an insecure document. So there, you know, I, I yeah. call it, it's like an Etch-a-Sketch. Okay? Yeah, that's right. You can write on it all day long and it's fine, but if you shake it up, you know, you're going to get, uh, you're going to lose your information. It's corrupted. And, uh, but we don't need to do that. We have God's law. Right, we have the objective written word of God. I love that visual. Man's heart being an etch-a-sketch. And, and it's true because the Bible says the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. And when you have an etch-a-sketch heart, you're going to have deceit operating Real quick in before we move on to these. You know, I'm going to say this. I know this is on the surface, an unbiblical statement, but hear me out. Mm -hmm. I believe that man is per basically good in the sense that 8 out of 10 people, 6 out of 10 people are basically, as long as I've had a shower, my car started, I had breakfast, I didn't get a flat tire on my way to work, take away my coffee in the morning, take away my hot shower, hungry, three days, History has proven that man is not under those conditions. Hmm. So how, how would you define good again in that context that you just said? Good in the sense that, well, good in the sense that 
as long as I have mine, fine. I'm okay. I will make room for other people. Oh, okay. Uh, but it, when my, I don't get mine. Right, right, right. I see what you mean. <laughs> as, long, as long as my needs are met first, then right. I'll be good to others. Right. Right. And yeah. in America, we're used to that. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's the sense. Other than that, no. I mean, the Bible is clear that man is not. Yeah. And I think history has proven that out. Uh, well, justice. Isaiah 1, 16 and 17. Once wash yourselves, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Does that sound like... How about this? Learn to do well. Okay? Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. These are the terms of repentance and coming to God and following God. Mm -hmm. You know, repent from your evil, wash yourself, make yourselves clean, uh, learn to do well. You don't just replace it. You replace your evil deeds with good deeds. Mm -hmm. uh, Christians, follower of Jesus Christ, should be out doing good in society. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. They be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. It's conditional. Mm -hmm. So, how readest thou? Yeah, I feel like this discussion about the social justice warrior is very important because a lot of Christians have bought into the terminology as well. And I like how you bring the fact out that the only one true social justice warrior is God. And it's, it's just throughout the word of Scripture. I mean, I dwell on these. Uh, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, Isaiah 58, 6? Mm -hmm. To undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free. And you break every yoke and you deal your bread to the hungry. And you bring the poor that are cast out and the naked. You cover them and you hide not yourself from thine flesh. God yeah. is calling us <laughs> to be. Uh, he desires mercy and not sacrifice. Uh, I have 50, I have numerous, numerous. Uh, Remember Jonah? Uh, yeah. What did Jonah say? Uh, when they, um, I knew you were a God. Yeah, I, I knew you were a gracious God. Merciful, slow to anger, repentance of the evil. <laughs> right? Ah, I don't want to go preach to those people. I know you're good. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Jonah, you know, uh, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting you bring this fact up about God being in the position of the uh, social justice warrior because I think a lot of Christians are uh, into this movement. And two, you see the world in this movement, but I think they understand this movement totally apart from God. Which is, you know, they're following their agenda. Yeah, now, exactly. You're not going to harass, shout down, intimidate, shame someone who had nothing to do with George Floyd's death. Right. Unless it serves your agenda. Yeah. You know, yeah. that is not justice. Right. So that is misrepresentation of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we've got to be very careful about how we use the word justice. And especially as you watch the world use it, are they using it in a way that's consistent with Scripture? And the way the world is saying justice, do they think of God first? I feel like they're thinking of, like you say, their agenda. It seems that way. Um, and a lot of people will be critical. And I'm going to just address real quickly. I want to kick this dog as we're walking by. I've heard people say things like, oh, an eye for an eye, that's barbaric. Mm -hmm. An eye for an eye has a limiting effect. You, mm -hmm. you want equity? Mm -hmm. People speak of equity. What could be more equitable than an eye for an eye? It, it, it levels the table. King, real quick, I want to I read something to you. Yeah. Out of the Times Observer. Sure. A man, uh, no, this is a recent article, warned, a man who sent threatening letters to Warren County officials in 2013. This was eight years ago. This was in the paper recently. Trying to get a new trial or something or get a new thing. And I don't want to mention his name. He's not a title, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he thre sent threatening letters to court officials, including judges and district attorneys. He was sentenced to, yes? Would you like to weigh in on this? What do you think? What was he Threatening sentenced? letters. Now, he, I don't know what else this fellow did. 
What was he sentenced to? 35 I, to 71 years. Uh, right here. What? What? You want to read it? <laughs> so when people talk about an eye for an eye, I mean, I don't think I think you can beat people to death, and I don't know that you get 35 to 71 years. So that's an idea of it having a leveling effect, it having a restraining effect, and an equi- is that not equitable? You know, are, are all men created equal? Uh, it seems to me you should have tougher skin if you're going to be a judge or a district attorney. Yeah. Uh, I mean, of course what he did was wrong. But to me, as I'm just reading this, he was sentenced to 35.5 to 71 years in prison uh, on counts of retaliation against a court official and terroristic threats. Mm. Wow. Words matter, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but speaking of that, when we look at justice in the Bible, and historically the way we view justice in America, it had more to do with behavior and action sure. than what we're sliding into now where thoughts even are being, I feel, prosecuted. Yeah, and people are being prosecuted for their position in society. Uh, to do justice and do judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And I'm speaking to believers uh, at this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, but I also want to always paraphrase. I want to. I want to. Um, you know, Jesus was rebuking this. I'm going to do a little Bible teaching here, if you don't mind. Sure. He was rebuking the Pharisees. He says, "Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites! You pay the tithe of mint, religion, of Annas Cumming." Religion and omit the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, Mm -hmm. and faith. Now, you Mm -hmm. should go to church. You should tithe. Uh, But without that, uh, he has clearly said that I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But then he says this. These you ought to have done and not left the other undone. So don't don't use your freedom. uh, But to seek justice is... To seek justice is the calling that God has put on upon all of his followers. Yeah, you know, as a... That sounds was, like injustice to me. Yeah, that, that sentence. I feel like yeah. it. That's just way over the top. That is, should he be sentenced for something? Or had he threatened a, uh, uh, any, uh, some individual, yeah. a wife or a spouse or something, do you think that would be the same result? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Woo, that is quite steep, especially when you see guys on the television smashing through uh, uh, secure areas, r- ripping off jewelry, and basically getting a slap on the wrist. That's an action. When you're destroying property, taking something that's not yours, and then you're out on the street the next day, Mm -hmm. something's wrong with that. And uh, I think we're seeing that more uh, pervasively in our culture, especially in the cities, Uh, like uh, what uh, George Gascon out of Los Angeles, who basically uh, gave... uh, what, a probation to a transsexual who abused a child sexually. And even the guy, the transsexual, laughed practically that his sentence was so light. And that's what's got Gascon into so much trouble and why the prosecutors in California want him removed, and justifiably so. Yeah, Tim, uh, let's take a break, and we'll uh, pick up on this for our next time. And uh, we'll uh, continue this discussion on who is the real social justice warrior. We'll look at the law. Let's do it. Okay. All right.